I'm Dr. Joseph Myers. I'm an attending anesthesiologist at MedStar Georgetown University Hospital. My patients are those who are about to have surgery or other procedures and require anesthesia. I see patients not uh, uncommonly that are quite concerned about the anesthesia, in fact, more so than the surgery. So what I tell them is that we have a technique, it's called Comfort Safe, and we can avoid many of the side effects of anesthesia. We can allow them to wake up quickly, we can prevent nausea almost all the time, and we can still have good quality pain control. From the very start, I like to make that relationship a team relationship so that we're on the same page and they're telling me the problems that they uh, may anticipate and I'm providing them some solution to those problems which I've seen quite effective and uh, I give them a little preview of what we're going to do right when we go into the operating room and also tell them that I'm going to see them in the recovery room and that we'll be discussing how to uh, make them most comfortable. The new technique that I've been developing is a comfort safe anesthesia technique. We uh, focus on avoiding opioids and using alternative, alternative techniques even as well as medications. So these we can prevent the side effects of narcotics like nausea, vomiting, uh, respiratory depression, sudden drops in blood pressure and even addiction and then we can uh, still have the patient comfortable and uh, maybe we do have to use small amounts of opioids but at drastically reduced rates. It works extremely well. We've used it in thousands of cases and quite happy with the results. There are two main reasons that a person should come to MedStar Georgetown University Hospital. Number one is that I think we lead the way in safety. We are completely safety focused and we're also very focused on the team effort and that makes working here enjoyable and it also makes for better patient care. What I really enjoy and find extremely satisfying is patients that are uh, concerned, uh, even scared of anesthesia and then I can talk to them before, devise a plan, they get comfortable with it and they wake up and they're so um, relieved and, uh, and appreciative and they understand that anesthesia can be uh, safe and, and easy. Well, anesthesia defined by the Greeks was without sensation. So we know that that's a pretty good definition. We would break down anesthesia into three different parts. First, we want to prevent awareness, so there's amnesia. And next, we want to control pain, so analgesia. And then we need the patient to be relaxed and still, so muscle relaxation. There are three different types of anesthesia. The first I think everyone understands is general anesthesia. You are unaware and you don't hear or know or see anything. Um, and then that's a continuum. So there may be just a light sedation. There could be heavy sedation. And at any time we could uh, deepen that to the levels of general anesthesia. So that's uh, anesthesia medications that affect the mind. And the next would be local anesthetics that affect the nerves. So we could put your finger to sleep or your foot to sleep or even half of your body to sleep with epidural or spinal anesthesia. And then finally, we could combine the two. So someone's under general anesthesia, they may wake up with an incision, but since we've used a nerve block, since we've used local anesthetic as well, then they won't have pain when they wake up. An anesthesiologist will always talk to you before surgery. We, um, there are some exceptions to that rule. So uh, if someone was having an emergency surgery, then we would save your life uh, even if we couldn't talk to you. But uh, the standard is to answer all of your questions, to have you comfortable in proceeding. And also we have some questions for you so that we're comfortable proceeding. Uh, we'd wanna know 
Um, if you've had anesthesia before, if there were any problems and what strategies we might have to address those problems. So uh, yes, you'll always talk to an anesthesiologist. Almost everyone is healthy enough to have anesthesia. We give a classification to each patient between one and six. So one is a perfectly healthy patient and six is actually brain dead. And for that, we would even give a, a humanely um, maintain the organ function so that they could donate their uh, organs. Uh, in between, we have patients that uh, have different degrees of medical conditions. So for instance, there are guidelines that would assure we have the correct tests uh, before we proceed. And we're also relying on the patient's internist to make sure that if a patient has uh, high blood pressure, for instance, that it's as well controlled as it can be. That's what we want to see before anesthesia, that you're in the best possible condition for you. It just goes down a long line of everything from um, patients that have had stroke or um, high blood pressure, breathing problems, cardiac disease, liver or kidney disease. We go right down the list and uh, have certain tests or um, evaluations that guide us. No, it doesn't mean you can't have anesthesia. In fact, once the internist has cleared a patient for anesthesia, meaning that they're in the best possible condition they can be in, even if they're extremely sick, our job is to develop the safest anesthetic. So it's not a matter of you're not safe enough for the surgery. Once you meet the guidelines, then our job is to develop the safest anesthetic. No, advanced age is a consideration. We understand that uh, organ function may not be as it once was, but per se, age does not limit one uh, or prevent one from having anesthesia. Uh, we also would take into consideration that geriatric patients often take a little longer to wake up. They may be confused for a short time or even days after general anesthesia. So that's why we want to tailor our anesthetic to use short-acting short uh, medications. It is personalized, and um, but along those lines, I would say that there are certain things that we always want to consider. So to tailor uh, an anesthetic perfectly to a patient, then we want to look at all available options, and that's the way to make the best anesthetic. Anesthesia is safer and safer. We've been a benefactor of the electronic computer age so that we have uh, devices that tell us blood pressure every instant, uh, how much oxygen's in your blood every instant, and then alarms that uh, alert us if things are getting slightly off course. So <clears throat> anesthesia is very safe. And it varies considerably based on uh, the health of the patient. If they're very sick when they come in, it's more challenging. Uh, emergency surgeries are difficult, more difficult. And if someone's having major surgery versus uh, elective surgery. The comfort safe technique is a protocol which uses opioid free methods or techniques. It allows us to avoid the side effects of opioids, which are numerous and significant. Nausea, vomiting, hypotension, uh, respiratory depression, even addiction. So we like to avoid those whenever possible. The comfort safe technique is a checklist. A, a protocol is simply a glorified checklist, so it keeps us quite consistent. We always uh, take into consideration all possible methods of controlling pain, and then we can give the best total anesthetic. The comfort safe technique is quite simple. 
Uh, I believe in Occam's razor, which states that uh, when there are multiple solutions to a problem, the simplest solution is usually the best, and that works for us. If you ever write a protocol, having people follow it, you'll find if it's simpler, it's followed much more precisely. And the third, the third thing that we uh, base our technique on is uh, Hippocrates first do no harm. So we evaluate the risks that uh, certain techniques and medications have as well as their benefit and then we try to really focus on the uh, avoiding the risks and still providing adequate pain relief. I use the comfort safe technique on every patient. It may be different each time but I use the checklist every single time. It does. For instance, we like to use Ketorolac, which is uh, a strong form of ibuprofen that we can give uh, intravenously. But if you have kidney disease, then we're not going to use Ketorolac because it sometimes has, uh, develops problems with the kidneys. The technique was started even 20 years ago when I saw patients that would complain of severe post-operative nausea vomiting. We then had uh, a new medication called propofol, was, which was a potent antiemetic prevention and even stopping of nausea vomiting. But for every case, we were using nitrous oxide. I started replacing nitrous oxide with propofol and the patients would wake up quickly and comfortably and without nausea vomiting and I never used nitrous oxide again. I was sold on propofol. Um, at that point I started doing uh, patients that were extremely sick on a daily basis and we would see over and over that when we gave opioid narcotics, their blood pressure would drop significantly and suddenly, and we would practically be resuscitating them. So we said, no more narcotics. And this happened to be a group of patients that was fit for that. They had often diabetes and diabetes neuropathy, and they were having surgery on their foot, which was numb. They didn't have a lot of pain there anyway. So we f soon found that while they wouldn't tolerate narcotics, we stumbled across the fact that they didn't need narcotics. They didn't need any pain medicine at all. Well, one of the important facets of the comfort safe technique is a collaboration with the surgical team. Uh, that's changed quite a bit over the years. When I was a resident, I heard uh, attending anesthesiologists describe to the surgeon, this is the ether screen. That's your side and this is my side. And that meant I make the decisions here and you make them there. But now there is conversation and collaboration over the ether screen. And I rely on the surgical team to, for instance, put in nerve blocks during the surgery. They can see the nerves and they can put the local anesthetic right in the right spot. And that's extremely effective. Since the comfort safe technique avoids the use of opioid narcotics, we can avoid their side effects. Patients are typically most interested in uh, avoiding nausea, vomiting. That's a tremendous uh, problem for them. I'm most interested in avoiding respiratory depression and sudden drops in blood pressure in the operating room. We can also uh, avoid iatrogenic addiction. We don't have to add to the addiction of opioids for patients in the hospital. Another advantage is that patients wake up quicker after the comfort safe anesthetic. So it's perfect for same day surgery or for geriatric patients who can sometimes be confused after general anesthesia. For bone marrow donors, we use a comfort safe technique to provide general anesthesia. They are unaware but on their stomach and uh, marrow is harvested from their hip bones. Uh, it's not particularly painful and it lends itself well to analgesics provided by uh, non-narcotic techniques. 
They can wake up without side effects. They can go home soon, and that's what they deserve. We have new opioid alternative medications uh, that weren't available even five years ago. So that's what we're relying on, and I'm sure that we're going to get more and more. This is the part that I'm most excited about because I see it as more than a transition that's occurring. I really do see it as a revolution. I see three very strong uh, things coming together. I see an opportunity to use non-opioid analgesics. We have several of them and we're going to get more and more. The other is the pervasiveness of checklists. So I've already said that protocols are just glorified checklists. And from the time Atul Gawande and the World Health Organization came up with the surgical safety checklist, we've been inundated with more and more because they're effective and they cost the price of a piece of paper. They save lives. And the third thing is there's uh, an overwhelming push to improve patient safety. And if we can develop protocols that keep improving and we can be consistent with them, then that's the way to improve patient safety. So we're going to keep working on our protocol. It's like uh, Winston Churchill would say, to improve is to change, to be perfect is to change often. And uh, I don't know that there's a perfect anesthetic, but if we keep working on it, we'll get closer and closer. We want to be a part of the revolution.